Welcome to Highline Excel 2013 class video number 31. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for week five, click on the link below the video or go to our class website. Hey, we got to talk about date functions, e-date, end of month, date, year, month, day, and a few more. Now we want to start by looking at today and now. Today we'll put today's date in. And I love this because it is an argumentless function. The screen tip doesn't show anything. Control enter. 11-7, that's today. Tomorrow it'll say 11-8. If I want the date and time, I use now, another argumentless function. Oh, there's the date and time. Now it's important to know that these will change if you want to hard code today's date or time, there's the keyboard for both of them. And this one in particular is important if you're entering transactional data. Control semicolon. Control shift semicolon puts the time. Now you can put these together. There's some times where you want control semicolon space, control shift semicolon. That date and time stamps whenever it is you entered it into the cell. And that's of course number formatting. All right, now let's go down and look at a few functions. I want to look at year, month, and day, and I have a data set over to the side. So it's the case that we usually get dates. These are serial numbers, and we need year, month, or day for data analysis. Well, we can simply use the year function. The year, hey, it needs a serial number. No problem. I give it a date, control enter, double click and send it down. And we can see it gives us our date. Now for power pivot and uh, some pivot tables and some formulas, it's very handy to have the year function to not only have serial dates, but another separate column for data analysis that gives us the year. Similar, we have month. It needs a serial number. Control enter. Double click and send it down. 1 to 12. And the day equals day. Serial number. Control enter. Double click and send it down. So now we could do analysis. For example, we could come over here and type 2009, 2010, control B. I could type total, control B, and use what equals some ifs. Some range, I want to get all the sales. Control shift down on F4, comma, criteria range, that's my new column. Control shift down on F4, and comma criteria. That's relative cell reference. Now there's other ways we can do this, but having a helper column sometime is a nice, fast way to do this. So I enter this and then copy it down. All right, now let's go look at some more date functions. Scroll down here. Ah, we've seen end of the month in this class when we did monthly reports from serial number transactional data. But end of the month is great for invoicing too. There's all sorts of different methods for granting cash discounts. Some of them require figuring out what the end of the month is. So equals end of the month. I love it. There's a function, the start date. And the trick is comma. If you want it for this month, it's zero. And the cool thing about the end of month and all of the date function is they know leap year. So if this is 2, 2, the end of the month is 2, 29. Now if you wanted to go to next month, then you add one. If you wanted to go to last month, minus one. So end of the month, there's all sorts of amazing uses for end of the month from invoicing to monthly reports. Now e-date is another important function. So e-date, we just want to jump a certain number of months into the future or backwards given a date. Now the problem with straight date math is we can't do this all the time because there's not always 30 days. Now for this one example here, it works. F2, but if I change this to the 10th, 
then we're off by one. And so we want our calculations to be correct. So we use equals E date. It just wants the start date. Same as end of the month. 0, 1, minus 1. But you'd never put 0 here because that would just give you the same date, right? But into the future by one month, there we go. Minus 1, it goes back 1. And you could put as many as you want. Now, I want to show you how to use the date function. If you ever get stuck on a computer without E date, that means 2003 or earlier, and you don't have the analysis tool pack, you could use the date function. Now, I love the date function because you just type in your name, the name of the person you want to go on a date with, where you want to go on a date, and boom, it'll set you up on that date, even if the person doesn't want to go out with you. So it's pretty cool. No, that's not true. It wants year, month, day. Now, you could just type it in, 2010. The month is 2, the day is 2, control enter. It creates a serial number. If I control shift tilde to show general number formatting, that's what the date function does. It creates a serial number date. Now control Z equals date. What we really want is based on this date, I want to use the year function. So I say serial number. Boop, and that'll spit out the date. Now we could prove this to ourselves by clicking on our screen tip on the year in F9. That's our evaluation key. It sure enough is delivering 2011 to the date, control Z. Now I can come over here, month, and this is where I want to select that cell. This will give me 10, and now I add 1, comma, and then the day, we can use the day function. Close parentheses, and there we have date with year, month, and day, close parentheses. So there we are. Now, of course, if you wanted this minus one, you just put whatever you want there. That is not necessary when you have E date. However, there are some situations when this combination can do things that end of the month and E date cannot do. So that's good to have in your Excel tool bag. All right, let's look at vest date. Here is your hire date, and five years from now you get your pension, or it could be your health insurance, or uh, whatever it might be, equals E date. Oh, I'm going to take the start date. Oh, wait a second. E date wants months, no problem. Five times 12. 12 is an example of a number that won't change, so we can type it right into our formula. And that is our vest date. If you had to do it the long way, and there we go. We could use that formula. Boom, it gives us the same date. Now, here's a situation. We saw this back in our flash fill video. Flash fill had a hard time with these lead zeros. But we can do a formula, but we can do a formula using the date function. So the year, oh, check this out. I'm going to use date, but inside of the date, I'm going to use a text function. So I'm going to say, hey, give me that text and give me four from the left, comma. The month, well, it's the in the middle, right? So I go mid. And I'm looking there. The start number is going to be one, two, three, four, five. And I want how many characters? Two, close parentheses. Finally, the day, that's the right. And the right, comma, two, number of characters. So we're mixing dates and text functions. But guess what? Date will have no problem with that text. Control Enter. It creates a serial number from that. Now again, we mentioned before, this is a common output from databases. They record dates in some order. So you need to know, in this particular case, that it's year, month, day. Double click and send that down. Click on the last one and F2. Hey, that's looking good. You know, just as I was doing this, I had another idea for a formula. Instead of doing this, which I actually kind of like, it makes sense, it's easy, we have a regular pattern in this data, we could use 
the text function that we saw back when we looked at our time example. Remember our time example we had hours and minutes in a similar output from a database. So the value is going to be this. In the time one we used zeros and a forward slash to insert a colon because time uses colon. But watch this. In double quotes I'm going to say 0000, zero, zero, zero because it starts with four characters for year. And then the character that says insert one character is forward slash. Well, what do we use for a date? Backslash, zero, zero, and then forward slash, which says, hey, insert whatever the next character is into the number formatting. And that's a forward slash, because the dates use that forward slash. And then zero, zero, close, double quote, close parentheses, control, enter. You've got to be kidding. You're even allowed to put dates that way? Yeah. Well, this is a text. But if we F2, remember our trick, to get a number stored as text back to a number, we do some math operation like add 0. you got to be kidding me. Look at that. So that's yet another way. Now that's pretty esoteric there, that forward slash to insert a character into a number format is pretty esoteric. So either way you go, there we have it. All right, we saw a lot about date functions and formulas in this video. We'll see you next video.